You Tommy? Detective Norman. How long you been in town? Three years. They handed you the Morello case. Right out of the gate. That's what the paper says, ain't it? And what's it to you? The case must be getting pretty cold by now. Or you guys something might warm it up. Yeah. I might have something. Mafia The Definite Edition is a remake of 2002's Mafia The City of the Lost Mafia. It's a full ground up remake, not some bitch ass little reskin. The combat is a remake, the driving is a remake, the story is a rewrite, the cast is a recast. With a team comprised of developers from the universally praised Mafia 3, as well as veterans from the original, a full modernized remake of Mafia the Mafia game with sharper dialogue, better performances, brand new gameplay mechanics, updated level design, and a rebuilt map was exactly the return to form this franchise needed after dropping the ball with their last release. But how does it stack up against today's big boys? So I think most of us can agree that the most important aspect of a remake is the presentation. How does it look? How does it sound? How does it smell? And they totally nailed this part. The world and visuals are brilliantly atmospheric and immersive. Everything from the city skyline to the cars are beautifully designed and rendered. But for me, it's the little details that sell this game's world. Like the way Luigi's bar changes based on what's happening in the story, the cars and billboards evolve as the game progresses through the decade, and the little newspapers you can pick up help put you in the context of the time, as long as you can remember 8th grade history. And the decade fits the tone of the story perfectly. The beginning of the game, set in the early 1930s, carries an air of hopelessness and desperation, which is what draws our main character to mob life in the first place. As we move up towards the mid-30s, the country is recovering from the depression, and our characters are moving up in the world, and the tone becomes more optimistic. And things start to go wrong towards the end of the story, coinciding with the ramp up to World War II. There's a very foreboding sense of foreboding. Ah! So the atmosphere is thick, and the world looks fresh and beautiful thanks to the overhaul of the map. The city layout is mostly the same aside from a few additional alleys and secret passages to increase your options during car chases. A lot of the suburbs have been redesigned, and there's a whole new rural area to the north. There's clearly a lot of love put into this map, and it truly feels like a city from another time. Because the world in the original game felt like it could have been any city in any era. Aside from the cars and a couple of landmarks, it really doesn't look any different from Spider-Man 2. Also, I know they were limited by the technology of the time, but the draw distance is so low that even on max settings, you don't get any sense of the skyline. So they gave it a bada bing, and here's the remake. This new skyline looks amazing, quite possibly the best I've ever seen in a video game. And you have different areas of the city with drastically different personalities, poorer districts with boarded up shops, to street vendors, to suburbs full of mansions, from shanty towns to Chinatowns to circus clowns. And there's all kinds of references all over the place. You got Scorsese Imports, which is clearly a reference to the director of Goodfellas, uh, Francis Ford Coppola. You got the Giuliani Bridge. We need to get over the river. Take the Giuliani Bridge. A little advice for my gamers out there. You make a left on Borat Street, hop on the Giuliani Bridge. That'll take you straight to Four Seasons Total Landscaping. Uh, you got the Corleone Hotel, which I can only assume is a reference to the film Hotel for Dogs. Then there's the amazing music. And I'm not just talking about the score, which is fantastic. But the licensed music that plays on the radio, as well as the news reports and commercials, do a lot of heavy lifting to establish this game's atmosphere. I give the Mafia Radio an A+. And also, there's this really cool detail. If you go under a bridge or into a tunnel, you start to lose reception. Uh, you know, it's not, it's not that big of a thing, but, you know, it's, it's neat. It's cool. It's a, it's a, it's a cute little thing. It's, I, I like it. It's, it's nice. So they created this committed atmospheric setting in a beautifully designed map. So what is there to do in the open world? Well, not much, it turns out, but I think that's fine. It's really difficult to tell a tight, rigid, cinematic story in a traditional open-world setting. When you're spending a bunch of time between missions, doing side quests, and exploring, the story can start to feel disjointed and messy. So instead, Mafia is presented as a fully linear experience. There's no optional content between missions. You're always in mission with a specific objective. You can't purchase any items or go into any shops. There's no type of money or currency, just linear missions that exist within a fully realized world. Gameplay-wise, the open map is utilized almost exclusively in car chases, and in that respect it's used well. The map is so dynamic that every choice you make during these chases can seriously turn the tide of an escape. Otherwise, the open map only exists to sell the world of the game. You do unlock a free roam mode after finishing the story where you mostly run around and pick up collectibles. There are a couple fun cars and outfits to find, and these cigarette cards are kinda neat if you're someone who really cares about the lore of this world, but that's not very many people. They mostly want you to collect these stupid foxes, which are pointless and weird and a little creepy. 
and I can't tell what they have to do with the game. Maybe it's an Easter egg for the new Sonic movie? <laughs> and other than that, there's absolutely nothing to do in the open world. You can't even visit the fun set pieces from the story mode. I wanted to go into the airport. I didn't think I was gonna be able to steal a plane and crash into a building like GTA. I just wanted to look at the planes and the hangars, but I couldn't even get into the airport. You can't get into any of the areas from the story mode. It's fucking lame. The original Mafia was one of the greatest stories ever rendered in a video game when it came out back in 2002. But nowadays we get like 10 cinematic story-driven games a year, and we've moved past the quaint nature of the acting and writing in the original. Really? I'm glad to hear it. These days we expect video game characters to act and sound like real people, and not robots, and we want dialogue with at least a little bit of life in it. So there's no way they could just reskin the original game's audio and expect anyone to take it seriously. And are you one of Salieri's tough guys? Only sometimes. Well, I think you're a very good bad man. Oh. Sometimes I'm even a very bad good man. See, that doesn't even make sense. Like, I, I know it's supposed to not make sense, like in a cute, flirty way, but even in that context, it, it still doesn't make sense. And their weird dead eyes definitely don't help. If you want this game to stack up against the top dogs on the market today, they needed to rework the story, they definitely needed to rewrite the dialogue, and they needed to bring in some real voice actors. And it paid off. Most of the characters in this game feel like real people. You know, these aren't the not the kind of goombas you're used to seeing in video games, if you know what I'm saying. If you get, if you get what I'm giving and saying there. Dino, Lou. You got business with the Don? My mother, she would be so honored if you tried her caponada. Excellent, bravo, bravo. Pacenza, pacenza. Our main character, Tommy, is played by Andrew Bongiorno. Bongiorno. He does a great job of acting like a guy who's a little bit overwhelmed all the time. So, what? Uh, throw him overboard, see if he can swim. Well, how would I know? They didn't show a badge. What are you, what are you, what are you talking about? He's a great video game character because he has a pre-established backstory and his own personality traits, but he's enough of a blank slate that the player and audience are able to project their own personality onto him, kind of like Keanu Reeves. And that's a difficult line to ride, but it's a balance you have to get right when you're making this kind of game. He's never going to be as interesting as Michael Corleone because the goal is to make the player feel like they're living vicariously through this character, not just a movie character making their own decisions that you may or may not agree with, which is why so many people didn't like that one game. Mr. Bongiorno here does a great job with that balance, and he sounds a lot like the original guy, uh, but without being terrible at acting. Cops? The cops are blackmailing you and want to kill your family? And just look at the way he wears that suit. Come on. <laughs> Following on is Tom's buddy Sam, played by Don DePeta, probably the best actor out of the whole bunch. He gives a great voice to the character and does some really good face acting, especially later on towards the end of the game. Sam is just kind of like the down the line, following orders, sticking to the script, doing it by the book kind of gangster. You, you know the type. Uh, and he was in Green Book, apparently, so make of that what you will. <laughs> I also want to give a quick spotlight to Sarah, Tommy's love interest and later wife, played by Bella Papa. She's elevated slightly above the standard video game wife character. Uh, like, instead of being a one-dimensional character, she's more of a two-dimensional character. But unfortunately, she isn't given much to do. But luckily, Mafia comes through with a plethora of other strong female characters. Uh, for example, you have prostitute, waitress, prostitute that you threaten, helpless daughter, helpless wife and daughter, waitress, Waitress used as human shield, prostitute, nagging mother, nagging wife, and prostitute. So it's a major win for female representation. Uh, next up, we got the Don himself, played by Glenn Toronto. No relation. He offers a much more sympathetic and relatable take on Don Salieri than the creepy aloof weirdo from the original. Plus, he does a killer Nixon impression. I want it to look like that white suit is covered in roses. You got it. Nixon out! <laughs> Everyone in the game is well cast and distinct from one another, with maybe a couple exceptions. But the major standout for me is Polly! Polly! Played by Jeremy Luke. He definitely has the biggest personality and the most on-screen presence. I'd call him the comic relief character, but this feels kind of insulting since the comic relief characters in video games are generally the most insufferable people on the planet. Uh, so instead I'll call him the Joe Pesci of the group. He's serious when he needs to be. None of these people are ever rattling off lazy quips during shootouts. He's only cracking wise when it's appropriate, and it becomes clear that his humor is just a device for him to mask his pain and loneliness. Kind of like a person. Polly's the most fleshed out character, he's the most relatable character, and his friendship with Tommy is the most genuine relationship in the game. Gotcha, Polly. <laughs> Jesus. He's fucking sauced. <laughs> Let's go 
Oh man, you're driving. And yes, in a lot of ways, these are just the characters from Goodfellas. The Don is Polly, Polly is Tommy, Tommy is Henry, and Sam is uh, is Jimmy Conway. Couldn't think of a joke for that one. And yeah, well, I do see the similarities. There's definitely it's there it yeah it's, yeah yeah it's most it's mostly the same yeah. But of course, none of these performances would matter if it wasn't for the amazing facial animations. The story simply wouldn't play if we couldn't see the emotion on the characters' faces. And it's super hard to make faces look good in video games. Most of the time, they look terrible. So my hat is off to them for what they were able to do with this. And look, it's not perfect. Sometimes when characters are supposed to look shocked or drunk, uh, they end up just looking completely vacant. <coughs> but these moments are few and far between. The facial animations are top-notch. However, getting real actors and capturing their performance as well is only half the battle. The other half is punching up the story and, most importantly, Importantly, rewriting the terrible dialogue. Just so you can get a taste of what I'm talking about, I want to compare a scene from the original game to the same scene in the remake. So let's take a look at our first meeting with Don Salieri in the original Mafia. Paul will introduce you to Vincenzo and Ralph. There are a lot of us. But those should be enough for now. Now listen, and listen good. We have some rules around here. Don't cross paths with the cops. They're on our payroll, so they'll leave you alone. But if you go too far, they'll all come after you. Money or no money. If they ever pick you up, say nothing, and I will take care of you. So if you were paying close attention, you may have noticed that that was fucking boring. So now let's take a look at the same scene in the remake. Now Polly and Sam have already vouched for you. But you need to understand we have a few rules around here, so you listen and listen good. First, no cursing on the premises. There's a million words out there. And the man who needs to resort to fuck this and fuck that is just ignorant or lazy. Second, we don't deal in the hard stuff. I don't want any dope fiends in this neighborhood. We'll let Morella poison his own people if that's what he wants. Finally, stay out of trouble with the cops. We only have a few on the payroll. And if you cross the line, the rest will come after you. You understand? Yes, Mr. Salieri. The overall narrative stays true to the original, but a lot of elements are tweaked to flesh out some of the characters more and give certain moments more weight. And when I first heard they were doing this, I just assumed they would do what a lot of games do nowadays, just having all the characters be goofy and quippy and constantly undercutting the story with lame jokes. Uh, but luckily, they fully retained the dramatic tone from the original. There are plenty of moments that made me laugh, but even the funniest characters have their dark side. <laughs> I don't want to fucking die, man. Christ, Tom. You can't feel sorry for these animals. A guy like this would plug you if you give him the chance. You gotta pull the trigger without thinking. You gotta pull the trigger without thinking. That's a major theme of this story. Throughout the game, everyone's telling Tommy that the only way to survive this life is to just not think about the horrible shit you're doing, and his unwillingness to pull the trigger is what ultimately leads to his downfall. It's heavy stuff. You know, not exactly a masterpiece on par with the greatest gangster movies of all time, but writing, directing, and acting-wise, it blows most video games out of the water. And it does feel movie quality. Uh, maybe more like a Netflix movie, you know, where they couldn't quite get De Niro or Pacino, but there are some solid names in there, like maybe Gerard Butler and someone from Game of Thrones and it's got a generic ass title like Mafia and you see it on Netflix and you don't click on it but maybe your dad watches it and he tells you about it and you're like oh yeah that sounds kind of good and you're scrolling through Netflix one day and you see it and you're like oh yeah that was that movie but then you keep scrolling and you never watch it and every now and then you hear someone bring it up and you'll be like oh no yeah no no that's, that sounded all right but you never get around to it but it sounds good it's like that. It's like that kind of thing, you know? It doesn't go anywhere crazy unexpected, but it's well-paced and engaging enough that you care about what's happening and who you're shooting. So now let's dive into what is arguably the least noteworthy aspect of this game, the combat. Now sometimes gameplay from older titles can hold up just fine. The Tony Hawk 1 and 2 remake made a couple of adjustments, but it plays more or less the same, and the Halo remakes from a couple years ago only updated the graphics because those games still feel perfect. This is definitely not the case with Mafia, which was released around the same time as those other titles. Go dig up one of your old consoles, dust that bad boy off, and put in the original Halo or Tony Hawk, you'll still have a grand old time. Especially if you're talking about getting the boys together on Blood Gulch, I mean, life doesn't get any better than that. But if you try to put in the original Mafia, you'll be like, how come my car doesn't work? Why do I die so quickly? Why do my allies die so quickly and make me fail the mission? Why is the shooting so bad? Where the fuck do I go? What is happening with the minimap? Why am I playing this?
And I know this game is a beloved classic, and it was a monumental achievement at the time, but it's fucking outdated. It's completely unplayable by modern standards. I wanted to play it for this review, and after about two hours of wrestling with this ancient artifact, I just said fuck it and decided to watch a playthrough. I can't make heads or tails of the controls, the shooting is unreasonably difficult even with a mouse and keyboard, and the melee combat's even worse. The driving's a little bit more accessible, cars are slow and terrible, but that's kind of the point of a 1930s video game. What's not the point is that your car can hardly sustain a single collision without losing its will to live. You crash into one f***ing stop sign and all of a sudden it's too weak to make it up a 6 degree incline so you can't make it to your objective so you fail the mission. Alright, maybe take it slow this time because you don't want to crash into anything, but not too slow because you don't want the cops to catch you and you better shake the cops quick because your car can only go about 3 miles without running out of gas! The game is obsolete. It's lost to time. It needed an update. So the first thing they did was throw out those ancient shooting mechanics to make the shooting the same as it was in Mafia 3, with a noticeable difference of a less stable aiming reticle. Well, because Tommy isn't a trained soldier like Mafia 3's Lincoln Clay, we wanted to create the sense that these are life and death gunfights and that every bullet counts. They do deliver on the promise of making every bullet count in shootouts, because if you're playing on classic mode, which you should be, they do this thing where if you reload, it tosses out your old clip and all the ammo in it and puts in a brand new one. And you're already given a very limited amount to start with. So if you're the type of person that likes to reload after firing one bullet, like I am, you're going to run out of ammo pretty fast. Having to conserve your ammo like this adds a whole other dimension to shootouts, and I think it's a huge missed opportunity to not have this available on every difficulty, or to just make it the default for the game. And they really should add this kind of thing to more games, because it adds a lot to these shootouts, which would have probably been a bit bland otherwise. Classic difficulty really ramps up the intensity of shootouts. Uh, it also ramps up the bullshit, like if you're waiting for somebody to get into a car and you're just getting shot at, or you're behind cover and you don't know where you're getting shot at from. Plus, enemies don't really react to getting shot. You shoot them and they just kind of go Ooh. and go about their business. Unless you blast them with a shotgun. The shotgun's awesome in this game. But the very worst thing about the combat is that when an enemy wants to throw a Molotov at you, they suddenly have this Major League Baseball fucking Clayton Kershaw, Gina Davis ass arm and can hit you with pinpoint accuracy from a thousand yards away no matter where you're standing and it's fucked up. So overall, it's your standard third-person shooter mechanics with a couple unique twists, but the shooting has never been the biggest draw of the Mafia franchise, and neither is the melee combat, which is only slightly less terrible in the remake. You mash one button, uh, you can dodge sometimes if you want, uh, the finishing moves are kind of neat when they work, uh, however the stealth is equally basic, it's exactly what you'd expect, you know, this kind of thing. Think that's all of them. So you already know whether or not you like this kind of game. The combat is not reinventing the wheel at all. So what do people find fun about the Mafia games? Now, arguably, the biggest gameplay draw of the Mafia series is the driving, usually offering more realistic and challenging mechanics than most of its peers. So how is the driving in Mafia Defense? The driving is good. First off, it's mandatory to play in simulation mode, otherwise just get the fuck out of my face. There's definitely a steep learning curve, these cars handle like a cat with arthritis. Especially early on, you'll be crashing into every wall and street sign, spinning out on every turn, but once you get the hang of it, you become the goddamn Jalopy Whisperer, a 1930s Ryan Gosling baby driver, the king of the fucking streets. And you can still run out of gas in this version, but now you can at least make it from point A to point B without needing to call AAA, and there's even a manual transmission mode if you really want to get your nuts kicked. And another cool feature that's somewhat unique to this franchise is that cops will try to pull you over or arrest you if they catch you speeding or running red lights, basically violating any traffic laws. This might sound kind of lame, but for me it makes you feel like even more of a gangster knowing you're actually breaking the law, plus it keeps you on your toes during the more mundane driving sections. And the high difficulty combined with the dynamic map makes car chases far more engaging than a lot of other games. And just look at these beautiful cars. They're so thoughtfully designed and carefully rendered, they're just pleasant to look at. Plus they added a bunch of motorcycles in this, which are equally brilliant and equally difficult. The one thing I would have liked to see is some horses and buggies. I know adding horse mechanics would have really been a whole thing, it probably wouldn't have worked, but I thought it was worth mentioning because horses were still a very common method of transportation back then, especially during the depression. It would have been really cool to see, but you know, it's, it's fine. They put a lot of work into the driving mechanics, it's incredibly polished. The car crashes are kind of lame sometimes, but the driving gets a fat high five from me. A fat, awkward four person high five. Alright, so before I get into a couple spoilers, I want to say I recommend this game to uh, anybody who likes video games, uh, people who love cinematic story driven games, anyone holding their breath for GTA 6, or if you're just somebody who loves gangster shit like me. I can't think of anyone who I wouldn't recommend this game to. Maybe it's a little short for some, but it's appropriately priced for its length. It's short and sweet. If you love video games, pick it up. Pick pick up a copy. Go to your local Walmart and pick up a pick copy of the of the Mafia game. 
All right, so before we wrap things up here, I just want to address a couple of gripes I have with the final scene in this game, and I'm going to be hitting you with some major spoilers for both Mafia and Mafia 2. So if you haven't played those games yet, I'll ask you to please exit the premises, drop a fat like on your way out, and make that subscribe button the awful Rakel refuse. So if you've never played these games before, I'm going to do my best to outline what happens at the end of this game and how it's been retconned and recontextualized over the years and why I have a problem with how it was handled in the remake. So 2002's The Mafia ends with Tommy getting betrayed and making a deal with the cops to rat out his old co-workers so him and his family can live happily ever after and witness protection. And they do for some time, but eventually Tommy's old life comes back to haunt him, and that's the end of the game. Then in Mafia 2, you play as Vito Scaletta, a different man from a different era in a different city. So you go through the game of Mafia 2, you get to know the protagonist Vito, you like him, you know he's another Goomba. Uh, then towards the end of the game, you get a job to go whack some guy, and as you're driving to the job, it slowly becomes becomes apparent that the dude you're supposed to ice is actually the old Tommy Angelo. So you find out that the guy you've been playing as for the whole game is actually the guy who killed our beloved protagonist from the first game. It's an excellent twist, really pulls the rug out from under you, makes you think twice about the murder spree you've been on. You know, is it right to mow down hundreds of people with a Tommy gun? These are the kind of brave questions Mafia asks. Can you imagine if they made a game nowadays where they made you play as the person who killed the guy from the last game? You know, people would probably love it. I mean, it really worked here. But then they kind of fucked this all up in the Mafia remake. They definitely improved the look of old Tommy. In the original, he kind of just looks like a befuddled old man. Like, hey, what? What's happening? What? And now in the remake, he's over here looking like a sexy grandpa. And he's a lot more stoic during his death scene. Instead of looking like a weirdo with dementia, he looks like a man who's accepted the inevitable is finally here and his time has come. And he almost embraces it because he knows his family will never be safe as long as he's alive. However, I think it was a huge mistake showing Vito and Joe so blatantly at the end of this. It completely ruins the aforementioned Mafia 2 twist, and it's completely unnecessary because returning players already know who these two are without seeing their faces, and new players are just going to be like, okay, cool, and then they want to play the sequel, they go and play Mafia 2, and they're going to be like, wait, wait, aren't, aren't those the guys that shot Tommy at the end of the last game? And they'll just be waiting for that moment the whole time they're playing Mafia 2, rather than being surprised by it, and it just ruins that awesome twist. And you still have to have this scene in the game, obviously, but just don't show their faces so plainly. Just have them pull up and be dressed like they were in the original game, and just pull those fedoras down over their faces. Plus, then we wouldn't have to see Vito's horrific, uncanny valley face. And it would make a lot more sense with the story if they were dressed like this, and not this. Because Vito was already a full-fledged mafioso at this point. I don't think he'd still be wearing his dusty-ass leather jacket from high school. And it's not how I was dressing at that point in the game. And like I said, it's not how the guy was dressed in the original version of the scene. So what are you doing? You completely undermined the best twist in this entire franchise for no reason! But other than that, the game is fantastic. Seriously, go check it out. And please come back next week for my review of Mafia 2. Thank you so much.